So let's say there's a table or something. And then there is another object here. Okay, and you'll see something like this. And then you'll have, let's say this is a, <clears throat> again, two kilogram object. And then here you have a, a pulley. And then it, uh, if it doesn't give you the shape of the pulley, you assume that it's a cylinder. If it, uh, uh, if it gives you the shape, then you, you go with whatever shape it gives you. So let's say it's a solid cylinder and you have your 19.6 and then T1, T1, T2, T2. So it'll give you a problem like this and then it asks you to solve for the acceleration and stuff like that. Now we've done a problem like this actually back in the chapter 10 earlier when we were doing rotational dynamics, remember we did the problem that looks like this. And then we solved, um, I think in that case I told you that the pulley was a sphere or something. Do you remember that problem? This was a sphere block and then the block. Okay, now the way that this is different than that is that in this case you've got the two kilogram is falling so that's translational motion you've got the pulley rotating rotational motion and then here you've got a rolling motion so it has uh, rotational and it's got translational whereas this one had a rotation translation and just translation you see in chapter uh, earlier in chapter 10 so there's one extra level of complexity here in this one. So when you're setting up the forces for this, here's what you got to do. In this one, it's interesting. It ends up that the FS is actually forward. It ends up that the FS is actually forward, not backward. When I've done this problem and I've set the FS backward, I've always gotten negative for the FS. So from that, I learned that FS has to be forward. So in, in, in this problem then, the FS is actually helping the translational motion. It's actually pushing it forward, but it's hindering the rotational motion. The T2 is causing it to rotate this way. The FS is fighting and the FS is trying to make it rotate the other way, but T2 has to win, okay? So in this case, the FS is actually helping the translation, hindering the rotation, fighting against the rotation, you see? Okay, so the equations are like this, 19.6 minus T1 equals 2A. So this one only has a translational equation, okay? This one has a rotational equation, like in chapter, earlier in chapter 10. T1 minus T2 times the radius equals I alpha, right? Whatever its I is, uh, it's a solid sphere, and the mass, let's say, is one kilogram. So it's, if it's a solid cylinder, it's going to be half mR squared, right? and then times alpha. And then remember what we do with it is we always say the R cancels the R, alpha R is a tangential, and then the mass is one kilogram, and then the uh, alpha R is a tangential, but we say that the tangential acceleration at the edge is equal to the center of mass acceleration of the block, okay? Okay, so the, these are the, this is the equation, this is the equation that goes with this block. This one is going to be T1 minus T2 is equal to half A. That's the equation that goes with the pulley. Okay, then you go to the rotating, ob uh, the, the rolling object here. And this one has two equations. 
Okay, there's a translational part of it. Okay, T2 plus FS. And then let's say give it some mass here. Let's say 3 kilograms. So T2 plus FS equals to 3A. <clears throat> okay, now here's where it's a little bit tricky, tricky also. Here's where it's how it's different from the other one. This A and that A are not actually the same A, okay? The reason why is because this one is accelerates at a certain rate, the ten, which is equal to the tangential acceleration of the edge, and it's connected to the top of the, that object, okay? So the acceleration of this guy is equal to the acceleration of the edge of that, and is equal to the total acceleration of the top edge of the rolling object, right? So this acceleration here, the total acceleration, let's put this here, A total. The total acceleration of this top point is equal to the tangential acceleration at the edge of that, which is equal to the acceleration of the block, okay? But earlier, we learned that the total acceleration there is equal to what? Twice the acceleration of the center of mass of the object for rolling, if it's a pure rolling object, right? So the, so the center of mass of the object accelerates at half the acceleration of the top point. Or you can say it the other way, the top point accelerates at double the acceleration of the center of mass. So this A here is the acceleration of the center of mass of the um, object. Okay, did I say or what it is? Let's say this is a, a, a hollow sphere. Hollow sphere. So when I go T2 plus Fs is 3A, the A is the center of mass acceleration. And that's equal to half the total acceleration which is equal to the acceleration of the blocks. So I do half of A. So that didn't exist back when we did the other problem in chapter 10 with the block. That issue didn't exist. So um, you have to put A center mass of the sphere is half of the A of the block. So you have a 3 halves A. So T2 plus Fs is 3 halves A. So that's the force equation. Now you do the torque equation for uh, the sphere. Now here's what you argue. The torque equation, the T2 is trying to make it rotate uh, clockwise, and Fs is fighting against that. Fs is trying to make it rotate counterclockwise. So we have T2 minus Fs times R is equal to the moment of inertia of a hollow sphere, which is 2 thirds mR squared times alpha, and the R and the R cancel, and T2 minus Fs equals to 2 thirds M, and then R alpha equals to the A tangential of the sphere. So it's the same as what we did with the pulley. And now here's what you argue again. You say A tangential of the sphere is equal to the A center of mass of the sphere, right? But it's equal to half the acceleration of the block again. So this A tangential equals half the acceleration of the block, which I'm just calling A. Okay? So then you have here a 2 and a 2 will cancel, and we're left with T2 minus uh, plus, uh, Fs is equal to 1 third Ma. Okay, so, so far here are all my equations. Let me put them all together. We have 19.6 minus T1 is equal to 2A. Then we have the second equation, T1.